Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and <laughs> it's really funny because I put that poll up and I thought that I'd be reviewing one of those movies, but I did not know that a Damsel was coming out today, and I was not able to get to Kung Fu Panda 4 so that is why I am reviewing uh, this one instead. And uh, also, I would like to mention that this movie, I was not expecting to watch this at all. <laughs> like, I saw the posters for this movie and the articles, and I thought, nope, nope. <laughs> like, that's not something that looks good to me. And, you know, it to be fair, like, it really did look like it'd be a really bad movie. Like, it looked like something that you'd see on American Dad or Family Guy or something. Like a fake movie poster that the, the main characters make fun of. And they're like, did you see it? We went to the theater and we saw Millie Bobby Brown in the new movie Damsel. And, you know, you'd see, like, a little scene from the movie like a, a fake scene and it would be really funny and stupid like that's what I thought this movie would be like I really did not think that this movie would be good in any way <laughs> because like you could also tell that it was going to be an agenda movie and it is an agenda movie like it it's very much it it it, it has all the it has all the calling cards of, like, your typical, uh, especially, like, a medieval agenda movie where they have to fulfill all the quotas. All the quotas, even though, you know, the medieval times, you know, it was nothing like this. Like, you know, it's it's like fan fiction. And, uh, well, so I was I was watching the movie, and at first, it was really bad. And it was so bad that it was good. But then there was a part where uh, finally like the plot happens with the dragon and everything. And everything after that I was like, oh shit. This is going to be a good movie. A, 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 a really good movie. Not a great movie. But a really good one. Uh, it, it was at that point, so it was kind of like a weird t turn in, in that, like, I was really shocked at, like, it, the, the, most of this movie was actually really, really good, and so overall, without getting into the plot and the characters and things, I would recommend Damsel on Netflix, and I'm not... <laughs> I'm not being funny. I'm not making a joke. I am being 100% serious. There is not going to be a joke after this where I'm like just kidding. You thought I you thought I got a you you thought I have a screw loose now like no. This is this is good. Even though it's an agenda movie, even though it's got a lot of bad stuff in it especially, like, the first 20 minutes, that's probably the worst part of the movie. Uh, but even though, it's really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. Like, even, like, thinking about Netflix original movies, like, this movie's a lot better than a lot of the Netflix original movies that I've seen. Like, I remember, I think one of the worst movies I've ever seen is, uh, Bright? Was it Bright or Blight? I can't remember, uh... It was that stupid, like, I don't know, like, what was that movie? Like, some kind of, like, a racial issues in the police, like, metaphor, but with, like, monsters and people or something, like, with uh, Will Smith and that other guy. Like, the, God, that movie was so shitty and terrible, and that movie was supposed to be, like, a part of a trilogy, and I was like, ooh, you know, like, you had to really force yourself to try to like that movie. This movie is is legitimately good. So first off, we got to get through the bad stuff. The first 20 minutes where they're setting up the characters in the story, 
that's the worst part of the movie because that's the part where you could see like if they didn't have all the dragon stuff in this movie and this was some kind of like romantic drama comedy thing it would have failed epically because first off they show Millie and I'm just going to call her Millie I'm not going to call her Elodie uh they show her fake chopping up wood and it's really hilarious because you can just tell that like she's not really chopping up the wood and it's it's fake and phony and it just looks very forced and unnatural and it's really really funny to look at and and um sorry about all the ums by the way um <laughs> yeah i I've, I've been i i'm still getting over the sinus infection and so it kind of gives me anxiety and uh when i'm doing videos and stuff and so like when i when i get the anxiety feelings i'll just go like um you know cuz i'm like trying to like uh give myself like a break or something i don't know but another thing is now this was very strange millie's father she's married to angela bassett and so you have <laughs> You have an interracial couple in the medieval times. Very, very strange. And I gotta say, like, Angela Bassett was the worst actor in the movie. Because, not because she's a bad actress or anything, because she's really, really good, usually. But, like, in this movie, she was terrible. She was almost as bad as Millie herself. She just, it, it it didn't feel like she belonged. It literally just felt like she was there to fill in a quota. Because, like, you gotta ask yourself, like, where did the wife go? Like, I think maybe they mentioned that she died, but I can't remember. But, like, where did the first wife go that birthed Millie and her sister? You know, like, because back then, you'd not, you would not get divorces. You know, if, if you wanted a divorce... In the medieval times, uh, you just get thrown off a cliff, <laughs> you know, like, that you wouldn't get divorced in the medieval times, you know, you get fucked up, uh, and that, that's what, well, yeah, I'm not gonna get into that, but yeah, that was kind of weird, and so the main plot is that Millie is being forced into marrying a prince in the kingdom of, uh, I think it was called, like, the Orientals, <laughs> the oriental kingdom and millie's acting is terrible in this movie uh whenever she it, it's funny because whenever she's quiet and she's not saying anything she's actually kind of good like when she's just like doing her her uh badass fighting stuff and she's doing all the action and the exploring she's really really good but whenever she starts talking she she just immediately takes all of the all of the authenticity and all of the the goodness out of like her her character because her delivery is so bad it is so unnatural and modern you, you know the way that she acts which is kind of like a cardboard cutout And then they have a part where Millie is getting to know the 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 Prince Charming guy that she's got to marry. And they decide to ride horses. And of course, Millie is able to ride a horse faster than the Prince Charming character. You know, of course, because she's the, the strong whamming character. And there was a really funny line exchange where um, he was like, where did you learn to ride like that? And she said, my mother. <laughs> yeah. And and then when it, when it gets down to it, too, I was thinking, like, and someone else said this, too. This movie is basically a ripoff of Ready or Not. The story is exactly the same, where, like, a girl marries into this family, and then the family tries to sacrifice her, uh... So, yeah, this is like Ready or Not, but in the medieval times. But you know what, guys? This movie's actually way better than Ready or Not. Like, I, I really hated Ready or Not. This movie's like the good version of that movie to me. 
And also, too, it's really strange because Millie's character, she knows that they're doing this marriage to save their kingdom and everything, uh, but it's still kind of weird how she makes peace with this forced marriage within a couple of hours, basically. Like, I thought that was strange. And Angela Bassett was talking to the evil queen, and it was really funny because she said that her father... And I'm not kidding you guys when I say that she said this. Angela Bassett's character says that her father was a rock maker. <laughs> like what what like what the what the hell is a rock maker? Like I looked it up on Google and I I, I couldn't find rock maker. Like what is a rock maker? Like that is something out of AI. That's something that AI would come up with. So I think that the script was written by AI. I don't think that this was written by a human person. Uh, and then also, of course, the Oriental Kingdom is racist. Because they tell Angela Bassett to know her place. And then uh, the dad comes in and interrupts uh, Millie talking with Angela Bassett's character... And Millie says that it's just girl talk. And I thought, this is another sign of, like, fan fiction writing here. Is that, you know, in the medieval times, they didn't have a term called girl talk. In fact, I looked up girl talk on Google. And it says that the earliest use of girl talk was in, like, the early 1900s. And this movie takes place long before then. So that was kind of strange. And then, of course, we see the corset and the dress being put on Millie, the wedding dress. And they're framing it as though it's some evil thing, like that the patriarchy made so that women have to suffer by wearing this horrible dress and this corset. And it's so uncomfortable and so painful. Uh, well, I would like to give you guys a friendly reminder that uh, corsets were invented by women. Uh <laughs> They were not, because we, we, we talked about this when we reviewed The Alienist back in 2017 or 2018. Uh, they had a similar scene where, of course, it, it, they just show, it's so uncomfortable to put on a corset. Well, guess what, guys? A corset, the corset was invented by a woman. It was not invented by a man. So, like, men did not come up with this corset. So, like, they keep on doing this, like, whenever they do, like, a period piece, they have to show these things that happened and these things that people did uh, to try to make it look like, see, this is why society is so evil and hurtful to women is because, you know, uh, the men make you wear corsets. And it's like, no, honestly, I literally don't care if you do or don't. Like, I, I, ne I never have cared ever. I was never told to care. Uh so I, I just, I, I don't know what's up with that, you know. Like, I'm so sick of seeing that in these old movies and things of, like, seeing a scene where, like, the main girl is like, eh, eh, this is so terrible and uncomfortable. It's like, who cares? Like, they did that back in the day. Uh, by this point, there's been, like, thousands of medieval movies. Like, who fucking cares? Like, just get on with it. Put on the fucking dress, like... I, like, it's just, it, it's it's so stupid. Because, like, you know that they did that scene with an agenda in mind. They weren't just doing that. Because the way that it was filmed, the way that they emphasized it, uh, it was clear that, like, they were trying to, like, show, like, see, this is what it was like. It was so terrible and so awful. And, you know, even though that we invented it... <laughs> You know, like, men did not invent corsets. Uh, <laughs> and then, so after they do the wedding, they take Millie up to this cave, and there were so many red flags here. So first off, all the people were had masks on, like, an eyes wide shut, and it literally looked like eyes wide shut in the medieval times. And I, I was like, you know what I said out loud? Nope. <laughs> You know, like, I, I was, as soon as I saw the, these 
fucking people in the eyes wide shut masks. I would have been like, nope. And then I would have run away. And then they take her in there. Uh, she's got to cut open her hand. He's got to cut open his hand. And you know when that would have happened? I would have been like, nope. <laughs> and then uh, finally he's going to carry her out of there. But she has to close her eyes. And there's a big hole right there. So you know that he's going to throw her down there. And again, a smart girl would have been like, nope. So, yeah. And watching her get thrown down the hole is hilarious, too. uh, Because after she regains consciousness, or she she doesn't get unconscious, but after she uh, collects herself, she she literally goes, You know, that's really funny, too. And she has a back and forth with the dragon, and I'll just say, like, this is where the movie gets good. Uh, even though there's still a lot of, like, funny stuff to talk about. But, like, this is where the movie gets really good because the dragon is scary, the dragon is intimidating, uh, and the dragon also talks. And uh, the, the voice actor did a very good job. And it's funny because in this cave, there are these plot convenience slugs, and they light up, uh, very convenient. They also heal you, (laughs) which we'll talk about because that's really stupid. There's also this hilarious, like, sexy sequence where I was like, this is totally eye candy to the point of where I was like, okay, I'm about to, like, (laughs) I'm about to screen record this and save it for later. I'm about to put this part in the spank bank right here, like, this fucking little sequence. Now, I'm just kidding, but, like, it was really weird. Like, there's this part where she's really thirsty, and there's this water, and she's like, ew, that tastes gross because the slugs have have all been in it. And then she stands underneath these uh, icicles, all these icicles, like 50 of them, and uh, she opens up her mouth, and waits for uh, water from the icicles to drip onto her tongue. And I was like, oh my, like, this is so, like, this is, this is, like, clearly like a, uh, (laughs) like an eye candy sequence. I mean, it it was so obvious. I was like, holy shit, like, I was not expecting this in this, like, feminazi, like, fan fiction thing. Like, this is really kind of, like, wow. And then the and I would also say it's pretty hilarious because I get that what she was trying to do, but I thought it was very bad to do this because it in my opinion, this is kind of teaching little girls that they should emulate this. You, you know, like these icicles, they they could kill you. They could fall at any time. No one ever stands under icicles that's like a a big no-no and uh so this is kind of teaching little girls to do that and so i didn't really like that uh but it led to a really cool shot uh probably one of my favorite shots of the movie which i was never expecting to say uh the dragon appears in the ice and it's just so cool how like they don't really show the dragon until, like, a large chunk of this movie is gone. Uh, like a horror movie. And then the dragon attacks her, and I thought, that was so cool. Like, wow. Like, this movie has a lot of, uh, good stuff. And the slugs, they also have healing abilities, which is very convenient. That's another thing, is that, like... (sighs) Whenever you have a girl boss character, the worst thing that you can do is make her win by plot conveniences. You know, like how in Argyle, the, they had the fucking oil all over the floor, so it was easy for uh, the stupid biatch to like ice skate all over in the oil, which would never happen at all, by the way, but it's impossible for that to happen uh you know because it just feels like oh she's a girl 
she can't really win on her own, like, with her own wits and her own smarts and capabilities. She's got to have all these things handed to her. She's got to have all these uh, things that are given to her so that she can use them like any smart person would use these things. And that, that was just so weird to me because why didn't the other girls use the slugs? <laughs> like, they, they showed all these hallucinations of these girls, which the hallucinations, they just came out of nowhere. And I don't know how Millie was able to see these girls. They were not ghosts. Uh, there was never any ghosts in this movie. But, like, she saw them. They all had wounds. And, like, didn't one of them at least figure out that the slugs could heal? And then, to top that all off, Millie makes some kind of comment about underestimating the slugs. And that was the point where I thought, it's really, really funny that this movie came out on International Women's Day because this is the point where we, the audience, find out that the AI writers of this movie <laughs> are comparing women to slugs. <laughs> I mean, that is just... <laughs> and then, of course, she rips up her dress. You know, we, we knew that she was going to do that. They always have to do that in these feminazi movies. They have to destroy these these things, these physical material things is like a symbol of the patriarchy, you know, like because, you know, they're forced to wear this dress and the corset and everything. So she's got to tear it up, tear it into pieces, just like in Ready or Not, where she's like, this isn't comfortable. And so she tears up the wedding dress, you know, it, it's so tired at this point, uh, but it shows, you know, that I'm that I'm right when I tell you guys, look, this is what I mean by, like, when they destroy culture, like, when they destroyed Star Wars, like, but this is a more uh, physical metaphor where you can see right here in front of you this woman tearing up this dress. You know, they know what they're doing. And then for some reason, too, she writes her name along with the other women who died down there. And I thought, why the fuck did she do that? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like the, those names are people who died. They all, I think they all knew that they were going to die and they wrote their names uh, as like a, a gravestone type of thing. So like, why would she do that? That was stupid. She should have put something like, I was here, dad, or something like that. So, like, if the dad came, then he could go to that place and know that she was there. You know, that would have made sense. But she just wrote her name. Like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck that was about. So then she thinks she found the way out. And there's basically, like, a Dick Sporting Goods crystal wall. Like, you know at Dick's Sporting Goods, they have that stupid wall thing that you can climb that, like, I would rather, like, I, <coughs> I would rather do anything than, like, climb that wall or something like that because I hate heights. Uh, well, she has to climb it, and then she has to use a crown to climb it, of course, because, you know, that's another kind of messaging thing. And the dragon finds her, and she falls halfway down, and then is able to climb up in like two seconds. But then there's kind of a twist where that way wasn't safe either. And there's a really good jump scare in this movie with the dragon. And like, it was a really effective jump scare. Like, I was like, see, th this movie, it was like a couple of choices away from being a horror movie and I really think it should have been a horror movie and I think that you know this should be like a horror series because it, it was that like uh it was that effective I'm I'm being serious here and then the dad and his friends arrive to try to save her and they have this hilarious predictable twist this movie is very predictable 
uh, but it's still very entertaining. But the dad knew all along that she was going to be sacrificed, so the dragon kills him, and then he's got to beg his daughter for forgiveness, and, you know, because all men bad. Because if you guys don't know, the whole reason why this debacle started is because men came from the Oriental Kingdom into the cave, and they killed three dragon babies for no reason. So... They're giving uh, sacrifices to the dragon uh, children so that the dragon will be uh, content with that. So it's all because of the evil men. And by the way, like the main bad guy of this movie, the reason why the whole movie started, he literally doesn't have like more than like a single line of dialogue in the entire movie. Because he gets killed... Right off the bat. And I thought another thing that was really weird to me. uh, Well actually two things. One of them is. When they throw these sacrifices down this hole. It's like a, a mystery to me. Why didn't some of them die from that? You know. That just seemed very very like obvious of like you know these sticks and branches like help them fall nicely to where they're still alive like it's just not believable it's like a a long fall so that was weird another question is how is it that the dragon knows english you know the dragon talks and like Where did the dragon learn to speak? And where did it learn to speak English? Because one of the things I really liked about this movie was how it was a live-action fairy tale, and it was like trying to be realistic, but trying to have these classic fairy tale elements at the same time. But I just wonder, like, where did the dragon learn English? Because no other animals in the movie are able to talk. You know, the slugs do not talk. Uh, No other animals except for the dragons. So why is it that dragons are able to talk? And and where did they learn English? And then, of course, Millie also has to cut her hair down. That's another uh, messaging thing. And then Millie has a nice little fight with the dragon, but since the dragon is a female dragon, that obviously cannot be the villain who Millie gets to kill. And this is what always happens, by the way, in these female-led movies, is that you'll have a female villain, and she's not really that bad, because there was this sad thing that happened, and, you know, she has a reason for being bad. Uh, and then the main character has to learn about that and has to learn how, see, it was the evil white man all along. And it's just all the evil white man's fault. So, of course, she is able to convince this dragon uh, to, to help her uh, basically massacre this entire evil kingdom of the Orientals. And uh, I just felt like that was predictable that, you know, the dragon wouldn't die because the dragon was female. Uh, but then again, the main the main villain of this movie, I guess, that gets killed at the end is also female. But she was working under her husband who died, you know, like she was just taking orders from him uh, and respecting his wishes. So she basically comes back to the kingdom and has this dragon come back and just murder everyone. Like, I'm telling you guys, the dragon in this movie is uh, scarier than Godzilla. Uh, he uh, More badass, uh, more violent. Like, this movie, I, I think this movie's rated R. Uh, it's really, really good. Like, I really enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Even though it was clearly like a fem- a, a feminazi like agenda type movie, it was really really enjoyable. Like, I'm I'm kind of like shocked. I guess it just goes to show, like, see, like even 
the worst agenda movie can be like a great movie. And then the final like thing where the dragon uh, kills all the people in the kingdom, they have this really cool visual where the evil queen, like her crown melts all over her face. I thought that that was really cool too. So yeah, I, I, I thought this movie was awesome. Even though Millie's acting was not good at all. Except for when she wasn't talking. Uh, whenever she opened her mouth and started talking, she was terrible. And I'm trying to figure out who's that other person who was like that. Because we had another uh, actress on here where, like, you know, she opened her mouth and it was a disappointment. You know, like, <laughs> I can't remember who that was, but, like, this is a similar type of situation where, like, she's pretty good when she's not talking. Because as, as soon as she talks, she's like completely, she just takes you out of the movie. And, uh, you know, there really wasn't much good acting in the movie. I mean, in general, like except for the dragon. Uh, but like in particular, Millie and then Angela Bassett did terribly. In terms of food, uh, I would give this movie a full-ass frozen pepperoni pizza with stuffed crust. You know that it's not the healthiest thing for you. You know that it's kind of like a comfort food, and it's kind of like, it's not as good as like a real pizza you could make yourself, but it's still really, really good and tasty, and uh, you know, you love to eat it. I mean, who doesn't love a frozen pizza once in a while? Uh, you know, we have one every week for dinner. And yeah, uh, I would highly recommend uh, Damsel. Surprisingly. I mean, I still think it's it's written by AI. I still don't like all the agenda stuff, but it, it was so enjoyable that, that I literally can't... I can't even pretend like it's bad. Uh, you know? So anyways... Please like this video and comment and tell me if you liked uh, Damsel. And then please subscribe to our channel uh, if you'd like to see more honest reviews. Because I'll tell you if an agenda movie is bad. I'll tell you if an agenda movie is good. You know, I know a lot of these channels, these bigger channels, they're going to probably pretend like this movie is uh, bad just because of the agendas. And I'll tell you guys, like, I did not like the agenda stuff, but I still like the movie. And that is always possible. You know, agendas don't automatically make a movie bad. The problem with agendas, though, is that when you have agendas, they typically make a movie bad. They typically take away from the movie because when people put agendas in... They're focusing on the agendas and not on the storytelling and the characters. But yeah, uh, again, this is the best movie of the year so far, and that's really, really scary. <laughs> so uh, anyways, goodbye everybody. See you soon.